Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Folly, and ah, I want to uh, throw a little warning at you. I've added some things to um, the document. It was most of my name. Um, so watch out. It's there. It's hidden. It's crazy. Um, so let's talk about ionic compound structure and function is what 2.3 is officially called. But we've got ionic, metallic, and covalent in this podcast. So ionic compound are made of ions. woo -hoo -hoo. Positive ions are called cations, right? And this is pretty easy to remember because cats have paws, right? So if I drew a picture of, my, of a cat right here, I don't have a cat, I have a dog, right? Here's my cat and cats have paws. So cats are positive. See, this is positive. Cat ions are positive. <laughs> Negative ions are anions. Um, the structure of an ionic compound, it maximizes attraction, so it's every other one, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. Um, they're very strong bonds because there's large positives and negatives. And they're lattices, not molecules, so it actually goes back like a 3D structure. So, And it goes on for long, 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 which is moles of particles. So that's a lot. Um, the other thing you need to know is um, size, oops, size of ions is significant. So um, remember, positive, man, I wish I knew how to write on this without upsetting it. Um, so positive ions are smaller and negative ions are bigger. Okay. Now these are lots smaller. I put lost. Lots smaller. And negative ions are just a little bit bigger. Okay. Um, properties of ionic compounds. They are brittle. If you hit them with a hammer, it will shift the lattice. So see how we have um, on this part right here, we've got blues that are positive and reds that are negative. If I hit it with a hammer and this shifts down a spot, um, what will happen is these are not drawn properly. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So it looks like I now have to redraw this. Um, so it should be, mm -hmm. um, it should be positive, negative. So I get for trying to cheat from the internet, positive, negative, positive, negative, negative, positive, negative, positive. So it's every other one. So if I took this and shifted it, you see how the negatives would be lined up? So if that happens, then a negative next to a negative would um, cause a repulsion. So like this right here, this is not a very good representation because this is a repulsive force that goes into it. But if you do it every other one, you've minimized repulsion. So when you draw it, this is wrong. You want to have every other one. And it's brittle because you shift the lattice, like charges will line up and repel. And we'll draw a better picture of that in class. They have a high melting and boiling point um, because they have strong bonds. They're non-volatile. They don't evaporate because they have strong bonds. Um, as solids, they're insulators and non-conductors. So remember, conductivity is a flow of ions, and the ions are locked in place and can't flow because of strong bonds. Hey, because of strong bonds. Because of strong bonds. As liquids, they are conductors because the ions can't flow. As solutions, they are conductors because the ions can flow. Um, many, not all of them, are soluble in water. Um, the positive and negative ends of water attack the positive and negative ions and pull them apart. Um, ranking the properties. So, again, welcome to Coulomb's Law. All right? Charge matters most. The bigger the charge, the stronger the bond. And a stronger bond means you'll have a higher melting and boiling point. You'll be less volatile. It means, well, the conductivity doesn't really matter. And then the size is less important. 2.4 is metal structure and function. Um, alloys were a part of this, and we did that in Big Idea 1, so I'm not going to do that again. Properties of metals is they're malleable. And all the reasons for why these properties come out for ionic was because of strong bonds. For malleable, it's because the electron cloud can reform. The cloud of electrons reforms easily when particles move. So if you shift it, the particles will move and the bonds will reform. Ductile can be turned into wires. That means you kind of squish it. The cloud of electrons can reform bonds easily when the particles move. They conduct to solids and liquids. 
ions, electrons in this case, can flow, and that's what conductivity is. They have variable melting point and boiling point because those strengths um, vary a lot. They never dissolve in water, and the strength of the properties is found by the size of the electron cloud and the attraction of the nucleus. Okay, So that's kind of the deal. It's not the most predictable pattern, but it's there. Um, part two, this isn't quite in here, but it needed to be in here for our properties. Um, covalently bonded molecules form molecules. They have a beginning and an end. So for example, oh, don't do that to me. For example, um, oh, stop it. So for example, if I drew water, water looks like Mickey Mouse. So when water looks like Mickey Mouse, it has a distinct beginning and end. Look at this guy. No distinct beginning or end, right? But Mickey Mouse, oh, look, there's a Mickey Mouse, right? They have directional covalent bonds. The bonds right here are between those particular atoms. They're the weakest because they have the smallest or fewest Qs, meaning charges. They never conduct because they are not made of ions. Um, polar things can dissolve in water, and nonpolar does not. Um, water, I want to remind you, has a positive end and negative ends, okay? Um, they have the lowest melting point and boiling point. And then there's an example of water. NH3 would look something like this. Um, and then C2H3. Oh, C2H3. I meant C2H6. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, yeah, I did. C2H6. Um, the strength is found by the polarity and then the size. Network covalent molecules. So they have carbon or silicon. It's got to have carbon or silicon with four beautifully spread out covalent bonds. Four bonds will always be beautifully spread out. Um, they're the strongest bonds. So think diamonds or quartz, not quartz. My goodness, what happened to me? Quartz, um, they have very high melting points or boiling points. Um, and they're very strong, they're hard to break, and they never conduct. So I think some of these are hard to differentiate. Ionic and network covalent, I think, are the hardest, okay? So notice network never conducts, but they both have a high melting point and boiling point. So that's how you differentiate between them. How can you tell if something is a metal? It conducts as a solid. Nothing else conducts as a solid besides a metal, okay? Um, polar covalent, if it never, so the covalents never conduct. And then um, the way you can identify them is very low melting and boiling points. Okay. It's hard to distinguish um, polar from nonpolar, except for by solubility. So basically this table right here, you've got to get pretty darn um, comfortable with. Um, the bonds and the structure, the lattice points are asked a lot. So that means when I draw this structure, see how this for the network covalent is atoms. And when I had it up here, the lattice points are positive ions. And when I had it up here, ah, these are full charged ions. Okay, so those are the lattice points. And then the bonds, you might need to identify them as ionic directional or non-directional covalent bonds. And that's it. That was quick, I hope. And I will say toodles to you. Mm, hopefully this will end it. It didn't. Okay. Toodles.